Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Namaste and welcome. My name is Keith. Welcome to Therapeutic Thursday. Yeah, you heard that right. It's going to be Therapeutic Thursday now. Getting something filmed and uploaded on Tuesdays isn't a reality. So from now on, Therapeutic Thursday. There's a lot that's been said that's always being said about hydration and how we should drink X number of glasses of water each day. Attend to our hydration. And that's true, and that's really good information because we're made up mostly of water. Something that doesn't get talked about that I think should get talked about is that we're also made up of vibration, like subtle movement and sound, and that we have to also attend to that. If we're attending to the hydration in our body for our health, then we also have to attend to the vibration for our spirit, because we come from sound, we're part of sound, and if we're not engaging with sound, listening for the sound within, and trying to break up any stagnation that gets in the way of that sound, then we'll have just as many problems as if we're not drinking any water through the course of the day. Okay, maybe not as many, but you get my point. So in this practice, we're going to attend to our own vibration. This will be a practice of breaking up some stagnation, of moving your body, and getting the vibration going from the outside to get it started on the inside if it's feeling a little bit stuck. Here we go. Bring your hands together. The sound OM is made of four sounds, A, U, M, and silence. We're going to use those four sounds because we are made of those four sounds and rearrange those four sounds into a mantra. This A that is creation, U that is life, M that is death, and the silence that is the potential for consciousness.
feel free to give your legs a change in their crossing or sit some other way. We're going to stay in a seated position. Take your fingers just into a soft sort of beak shape. Find where your breastbone is and gently tap on your breastbone. This is where we'll start. And the tapping should feel like the flutter of a hummingbird's heart. So it's not very hard. And then you can go up the breastbone a little bit and down your breastbone a little bit, but stay in this zone of your breastbone. It doesn't have to go all the way to the very tip of your breastbone into the xiphoid process, but go up. And kind of feel it flowering open near your clavicle. Just tapping in this space. And then as you get more comfortable with the idea of tapping, you might tap a little bit more intently without it becoming too intense, right? So you're really thinking about waking up this space around your breastbone, the space of where your thymus is. And as adults, our thymus is a bit smaller than it was when we were children. But nonetheless, it's crucial and critical to our well-being. It plays a, a large role in our immune system. So giving it some vibratory waking up is often a good idea. Allow yourself to enjoy the sensation of tapping. And if it ever becomes too much, just take a break. When one hand becomes tired, switch it out. It's good to use your non-dominant hand as well. And of course, you're getting the sensation of tapping on your skin, on your chest. But there's also a response that's going all the way back through your arm deep toward the elbow joint. Right? And vibration is really great for your bones in general, allowing it to encourage some growth in the cell structure of your bones. And this is something you can do anywhere, anytime, at a traffic light, waiting for a Zoom meeting to start. Wherever you are and you have some time, tap a little bit. And it doesn't have to be for a long period of time. It doesn't have to be every day. But tap occasionally. It's a little bit like coffee. Well, maybe not like coffee. But it does wake you up a little bit. Just a little bit more. And then let your hand drop away and start to make your way down onto your back. Stretch out almost like you're in Shavasana. But keep your feet more parallel. And you can have your hands on your belly. And then let your feet begin to move. And when they move, you want your whole body to respond to that. So it uses the muscles in my lower leg to get things moving. And I might feel skin or muscle or fat cells moving around on the front body. So there might be a little bit of a jiggle there. My thighs will stay pretty active and my quads will stay pretty, or my uh, calves will stay pretty active. So I'm getting a nice massage on the back of my skull, right at the occipital bone. And a little bit like your breastbone, and also like your sacrum, the occipital bone has a floating quality. So it's a great sound receptor. It's a great place for vibration to go. And I'm not necessarily vibrating on that spot right now, but I am stimulating that spot. And the stimulation frees it up some. You might notice that your legs get a little bit tired along the way. And that's natural and that's normal. So pause whenever you need to. And then come back to it. And just notice where you resist movement, 
it might not feel like it. But for myself, I notice right away that if I pay attention to my head and try to let it go, it actually bobs a bit more. So that the whole movement goes through my entire skeletal system. When I was studying Thai massage, we would do something like this on clients to do just that. Free up any stagnation in the body, moving from your feet to get everything else freed up. Because your feet are what receive so much information as you move around. And if your feet can free your body, and if you think about freeing your body from your feet, then just the way that you walk through the world becomes therapeutic. Just a little bit more here. And then when you stop, let everything soften and just feel what you feel. So it can be a little mini Shavasana here. Receive the vibrations that you gave, just gave your body. You'll probably notice them most around your legs and feet. And then begin to bend your knees and set into your back a little bit more. So your low back really connects to the ground and you feel your sacrum against the ground. Notice where your head and neck are. And then stretch your legs up to the ceiling. And when you're there, there's a little bend in your knees so things are soft. And then begin to give your legs some shaking. It's hard to say where the movement begins, but it definitely requires that your knee joint is soft. And sometimes I think about it coming all the way from my hip or maybe just from the quad. It's like a false start of my legs wanting to stretch out and bend. And then right where I get stuck in a groove where I feel like, oh, now I can't do it anymore, change the pattern. So rather than your legs doing the same thing at the same time, then they jiggle independently and they can go back to their jiggle as a pair. And then add your arms up to the ceiling and have a similar feeling come through your arms. And this definitely feels like it's beginning at your elbows, maybe at the shoulders. So it isn't just shaking your hands, but again, there's patterns that you can fall into. And when you find yourself getting stuck, change the pattern so that you keep the momentum, you keep the jiggle, you keep the vibration going all the way into your body. Dead bug shake. It's not a great name, but it does describe well what your body is doing. It's very funny to try to talk while doing this too. And the nice side benefit to this is by having your arms and legs up, your abdominals tighten so in a soft way. And it's not aggressive, it's not an ab thing. But just having your legs vertical, having your arms off the ground means that your, your abdominal structure has to turn on a little bit. Last little bit here. Good. And then let everything drop. And then notice your skin. There might be a little tingle to it. And then rock yourself up and find a cross leg seat again. And do it around your face now, something similar. So if you thought the dead bug was a little bit weird, then this is gonna seem crazy, right? Have a very soft, 
lip, a very soft expression. And then you're gonna be moving air through your lips to make them buzz. And the goal of it is to have a continuous buzzing without a strong explosion at the beginning or one that peters out after just a moment. So if I'm doing it, it looks like this. Yeah, it requires some softness, it requires steady air. So it really does ask you to focus on how you breathe and make sure that you're breathing out in a continuous way without it being a through your lips to get them going. So a little bit of a pucker perhaps, or a little duck face to get it going. And then you'll go through that buzzing, but the buzzing also has the sound of a buzz, right? So breathe in. And then when you went, and then when you run out of breath, do it again. And try to keep it going for a little while. One more time. And then you should feel a real nice tingle on your lips and maybe a little tickle on the bridge of your nose. And that tells you that you loosened up the muscles around your face and you were literally vibrating your face. So now take what you were doing when you were lying down in your dead bug shapes and just focus on your wrists. So there's a real wrist shake. Like you've got a lot of water on your hands. There's something very Madeleine Kahn about it. I think about her in the movie Clue. Pretty sure that was Madeleine Kahn. She had a lot of gesturing with her hands. Flip them over so there's more of a bounce. And what you're trying to do is get some circulation into your hand, sure to move around through your wrist joint. So if you have wrist problems, if you have things like carpal tunnel, you know, be friendly. Change it up so that they're not doing it at the same time. And this comes very much from my bicep and my elbow at this point. My bicep stays pretty active because my arm is in this bend and because my wrists are shaking. And then I change it again and again. Kind of praying mantis hands or um, two T-Rexes having some sort of hand fight. Shake them, bounce them, out and in. But notice I'm not flapping my elbows out, so I'm not doing it here, but really just focusing on my wrist with soft fingers, a little more bouncing. Good. 
And then let your hands rest on your knees. Again, open your hands and feel what the palm of your hand feels like. And then take that softness that you used at your wrist, and when you take your arms open, keep some softness in your elbow. And then when your arms come around you, slap. Slap your body. Slap your body. Slap your body. And it's around your armpit and shoulder. So whatever arm is on top gets a shoulder. Whatever arm is on the bottom gets closer to an armpit. And you can let that be a bit more spaced out. So I go shoulder and somewhere close to my ribs. When I lived in New York, there was the um, Russian and Turkish baths in my neighborhood. And there were these eucalyptus branches that they kept in the sauna. And there'd be always a bunch of older men in there who clearly it was part of their social routine and their health routine. And they would slap each other with these eucalyptus branches. And it's a bit like that. So if you imagine that this is a eucalyptus branch and not your palm, then maybe it feels more like a spa treatment unless like you're slapping yourself. Maybe not. A few more times. Last two. Last one. And then let your arms relax down by your sides. Move on to your knees. And kneel on your knees. If you need a little something soft under your knees, you can put that under there. It's nice to do this on your knees because it's harder to use your legs to make the action happen. So you pick up your shoulders and then you drop. And you pick up your shoulders and you drop. And you pick up, jump, pick up, jump. Until they're just bouncing. And it should feel the way that it feels, you know, there are people who laugh this way. So you can lean a little bit to the side. And shoulder drop. Slow it down when you get stuck in a rut. So it really turns on the muscles across the top of your neck, or across the top of your shoulders, rather. And a little of this one goes a long way. So last handful. And this should be something that you're aware of right across this ridge, top of your shoulder, your upper traps. But then notice that your arm feels heavier or less stuck in the shoulder, perhaps. And then start to make your way up to stand. And a bit like what you were doing, opening your arms and slapping, you're going to take that into a rotation now. So the thing to remember is to not do a lot of knee bending when you twist, but allow yourself to open and turn, open, turn. And you get a shoulder slap, but then you've got a ham that smacks the back of your body. And it'll hit somewhere around your kidney. So I'll turn around for a second. Open.
And it's the hand that's meeting your back body that might even be more important. So, you know, hitting your shoulder is also breaking up some stagnation there. But hitting back around that spot near your kidney is great too. Breaks up the thump, thump, thump. It breaks up whatever might be stuck in your kidney function, but you're being nice about it, right? Not a big smack. Just the natural swing that comes from your arm meeting your body. A little bit more. Last three, two, one. And then let everything drop. And then just like you were tapping on your breastbone and tapping your thymus, now make soft fists and you're gonna tap everywhere. So you can start below your breastbone. So not quite in your belly, not quite in your chest. Then that space just across your ribs and then down into your belly, drumming there. Out to one side, into your rib cage. Across your belly, other side of your rib cage. Back into the center. One side of your chest, other side. Back down your belly, soft around the base of your belly, top of your pelvis, and then down into your upper thighs, fronts of your thighs, around the sides, toward the inside, up the back side so you get your bum. You can turn your hand so it's just the thumb index side of the fist. It's easier on your shoulder. Down the out seam, friendly around your knee joint. Down the front side of your leg. Get a nice forward bend here. Back side of your calf. Achilles, ankles, tops of your feet, to the instep, you can roll to your pinky edge, tap along the inside of your arch, inside of your ankle, drop your soles, kind of the inseam of your leg, pelvis, belly, breastbone, chest and then change it into beak fingers so you can go along the shape of your clavicle try not to tap the microphone too much here out to the edge of your shoulders where your clavicle meets the acromion a little point there Cross the ridge of your shoulders there, the upper traps, into the sides of your neck. So gentle on the neck, toward the base of your ear where your jaw is, along your jawline. Through your cheeks. right up to the top of your cheekbone. Follow that toward your ear canal. And take off your glasses if you have glasses on. 
so you can get into the space of the lower orbital bone up around your eyebrows, very light here. into your forehead, along your hairline, towards your ears, onto your scalp, more like the pads of your fingers now rather than the tips, on the back of your skull, do little flutters so it feels very soft around your ears, flick them a little bit. You should feel that in your scalp and also deep in your ear canal. Back into your face, jaw, neck, breastbone. And then over to one arm, kind of a soft knocking. As many surfaces on your arm as you can find. To the other one. Remember it's soft. Not trying to give yourself any bruises. Last little bit here. Good. And then let your body hang and just feel what you've done. If you put your glasses on the floor, pick them up so you don't step on them. And then take what you were doing with dead bug and put it into your entire body, right? So a little bit of distance between your two feet. And remember how it was just a soft shaking. So start by bending your knees and feel as though you're standing on a, a moving vehicle, like a subway and just ride the waves of that. You can let your body shift, make sure your neck is easy. And let yourself bounce up and down some. Feel how it starts at your feet and you can feel it all the way up into your arm. Add some shoulder movement while you're doing it so that your arms have some swing so that nothing gets rigid. You can always have your toes turned out a little bit if that helps. And then a soft bend in your elbow so it resembles the wrist shake that you were doing. But you can let your Palms turn towards your body so that when you're bouncing, your fingers have a little bit of a shake. And then over time, your arms can reach up a little bit. And then you might feel your heels bouncing a little bit more. And take a breath in. Last two. And then let everything drop. So I mentioned how your feet are sort of the beginning of a lot of this movement. 
And they're the receivers of a lot of information when it comes to movement too. So taking that idea, lift your heels and then drop them. Lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop. And it's just this soft bouncing of your heels. Not so much that things fall off the wall or fall off the table. And definitely not with locked knees. But just bouncing in your heels, you'll feel the muscles up the back of your leg helping this happen and they might fatigue. But allow yourself to just bounce and receive that vibration all the way up your skeleton. If it feels at all jarring, make sure that your jaw is loose. Because you don't want to hold your jaw tight while you're bouncing. It just kind of shuts it all down. You want your jaw to be easy and loose and your tongue to be soft. And we won't do a lot of this. Just a little bit more. Last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Pause to feel. Good. And then start to make your way back down onto the ground and lie down on your back. And as you get down here, soles of your feet flat to the ground. And then use your breath in to lift your hips and then exhale your sacrum. So just like what you were just doing with your heels, Tap your sacrum against the floor. And you don't have to breathe in and breathe out every single time you do it. You can actually begin to slow your breath down. So maybe it takes about four taps, four or five taps to breathe in, and about that many to breathe out. Make sure that you're not squeezing your butt muscles when you do it here, and that your neck still feels easy. Tapping that group of segmented bones of your sacrum, remembering that they receive vibration. They want to receive vibration. They want to vibrate, just like your breastbone, just like the occipital bone. So enjoy the tapping here. And if it does not feel good, you can always put a blanket down underneath you. It doesn't have to be on a hard surface. And you have to make sure that you're keeping your low back long while you're doing it so that it doesn't feel like you're going down toward your tailbone. If you have a lot of curve in your low back when you do it, it feels like you're trying to tap the back edge of your tailbone rather than the flat surface of your sacrum. A little bit more. This one we could do for a long time, but we won't. You get the idea. You can always do it more on your own. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, And then begin to stretch yourself out and take rest. Let your arms go. Move your head from side to side. belly sink. Notice any holding. Make room for the residual vibrations to move through you. Allow your breath to become shallow. Your expression to stay soft. Be 
feel like you're becoming part of the primordial vibration again. Everything other than the vibration in you can get out of the way. Know that the vibration is always all around. Sometimes you have to move to become part of it. Sometimes you become the most aware of it when you stop moving. Just like a mantra. You repeat it to become part of that vibratory energy. And other times you simply listen for it, moving through the air around you. Take a deeper, fuller breath. Stretch open your palms and Ball your fists up a couple times. Move your head from side to side. Walk your feet in. Move your legs. You can roll to your side to come up to sit. And bring your hands up into your heart. We are truly the light of each other. And it's with gratitude that I bow to the light I see in you. Peace be with you. Thanks for tuning in.